That's an interesting point. I'd like to stay on that for a second because I was just watching uh, Driving Miss Daisy the other night with my with my wife. It was her grandfather's favorite film. Uh, also, by the way, he was he amazing man, uh, Fred Corzon. He was city uh, he was uh, mayor. They call him city commissioner for mm -hmm. Bloomfield, where uh, Mitt Romney was from. Professor, PhD, and uh, was a bombardier in World War II. Just incredible. You go to the funeral, you're like, oh my god, what am I doing with my life? His favorite film was Driving Miss Daisy. So it was an emotional roller coaster to watch it with my wife because she had never seen it. But you know, Dan Aykroyd plays uh, plays one of one of your folks. See, but in the South, it's always weird hear the, hearing a, a, a Winn Dixie Jew. You're like, what is this? Uh, and Dan, <laughs> Dan, it was just very out of, horrible casting. Anyway, but he walks past the assembly line, and you see these people. Right, he owns this big factory, and just doo -doo 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 -doo. you know, it sounds like bullets going off in this factory, and you see hundreds of people employed. I'm going, hold on a second. When people talk about how millennials now, there's less job security than ever, and they feel like the lost generation, they've been abandoned. I'm going, how many millennials would spend nine, ten hours a day in one of those factories? Because when we're talking about the good old American days, that's what you're talking about with job security. That was Pittsburgh back then with a lower unemployment rate, uh, with a higher unemployment rate, but how many millennials would be willing to do that? They, they benefit from the technology. I think there's a disconnect where when people talk about it, they need to say, this is what job security security means. This kind of job back then, you'd hear a mighty different tune. That's exactly right. The same people who decry the lack of job security are the same people who are with Nancy Pelosi when she says that we should ensure that you don't have job lock, that you shouldn't be forced to actually be in a job in order to have health insurance. Right. And these are people who, who want to switch jobs every couple of years or they want to pursue their dreams of being an artist. But the notion that any of them were going to sit there and, and weld Right. If they want to weld, they could do it right now. There are plenty of welding jobs in the United States, but can you imagine any of these gender studies majors actually welding? They're talking about the evils of capitalism and the lack of job security, and then they're majoring in, in gender studies. Yeah. Like if you cared about job security, maybe you'd go into those industries that are supposedly so hallowed about job security. Again, the only reason that those assembly line jobs were considered so awesome in 1930 is because assembly line jobs in 1830 were even worse. Right. Meaning that the jobs now are better than the jobs then. You'd want to work them more than you'd want... Like, we, we laugh at people who are baristas at Starbucks. That's a better job. It is better to be a barista at Starbucks than it is to be sitting on an assembly line ensuring that stuff that people are now doing in Vietnam is being done in the United States.